It's our privilege to be joined now by two members of that 1986 World Cup team, winger Carl Valentine and goalkeeper Paul Dolan. Boys, great to have you on the show. Have you seen that clip of 1985 in St. John's more in the last week than you have in the last 35 years, Dolly? Oh, yeah, all the time. And uh, what comes back to me now is, especially with having Carl here today, is how important he was in both the goals and how important set pieces were for Canada at that time. And also mm -hmm. just the look of the stadium and everything else uh, compared to what we saw yesterday. It's just, it seems like a million years ago. It looked like a million years ago, too, when you look at the, the big ticket stadiums or where it's going to be at from now on. It's never going to be in these small little stadiums like you guys played in in Victoria and then in, uh, on the East Coast as well in front of very small but pro-Canadian. But it was hard for us to draw crowds back then. Not hard anymore, though, is it? Uh, nope. Carl, I want to hear about 1986. I mean, what was the atmosphere like? Obviously, a big moment for Canada the first time playing at the FIFA World Cup. And you came up against the big hitters in the European champions, the Soviet Union and Hungary. It's, uh, it was always going to be a difficult test for Canada. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, we were uh, well prepared for it. Um, obviously, you get to the World Cup, uh, you want to be able to talk about it years on. And I think we did that because... Uh, we didn't get blown out in uh, any of the games. You know, we, we kept them close, especially the France game. Uh, they were one of the favourites to, uh, to to make it or to win the World Cup that year. So, um, you know, we put uh, it really in some great performances there. And uh, they, that, that squad of players was just amazing. What they went through uh, in qualifying, you know, there was no league. The league folded in 84. Um, it was just a, a tremendous uh, squad of players that, um, you know, all the, I only played in the last game, but uh, Dolly and all the lads that went through that, it was just amazing. And then to get to the World Cup and to uh, play at the level we did was uh, just unbelievable. You know, Dolly, I look back at that, and did you guys think, looking back at that as well, that it was a watershed moment for the Canadian Soccer Association, for our program, that it was going to springboard onto you know, more regular appearances at the World Cup? How did you guys feel <laughs> about that? I absolutely did. And I was only 20 at the time when we played the first World Cup game. And I always kept thinking I could get back to two or three or four, you know, more World Cups. And of course, that didn't happen. And I think uh, just getting back to what Carl said there, I think part of the reason is that the North American Soccer League folded. And then the next time we had a qualification, it was two games and you're done. Home and away against a decent team as well in Guatemala. We went down there. Lost a 1-0 on a penalty kick. Carl Valentine, I remember, top corner. Unbelievable save from the Guatemalan goalkeeper. We come back, they score a fluke goal early, and then uh, we're having to scramble our way to a 3-2 victory. But uh, the away goals took us out after just two games. And so you're, you've really hit a roadblock there where there's not as much funding, there's no league at the time. And unfortunately, things just kind of went south from there before we were able to kind of turn things around eventually with the program with your, you know, 20, uh, 2000 gold cup victory. Now, do you think guys that that was part and parcel of, you know, the fail, the failings of the North American soccer league that we, we benefited from at that time. And then we had a gap before the Canadian soccer league. Um, and we just seemed to, even though it's you know, not the, the greatest league in the world, of course, but it kept players playing and it gave them a, a springboard to other things too. And a lot of those players would step into our national team and do a really good job. And we sort of lost that. The Canadian Soccer League came in and we benefited a little bit from that. And then and up until Major League Soccer now, I think there's been a lot of gaps to, and very difficult for us to you know, sustain and have sustainable winning, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it, it was a challenge. I mean, I think, you know, to what Dolly says, I mean, I, when we qualified, we thought, wow, we broke the mold. Uh, we're gonna be there every time. Uh, I think most of the teams then got a, a million dollars plus, which was a lot of money in them days. And we thought, well, that's going to go to something, a league or some, uh, something to help us. Um, but it probably wasn't spent in uh, the best way. Um, and then, yeah, when the CSA, uh, the Canadian Soccer League come around, if you remember, we had, you know, we had that one game in Toronto where it was a big ass. We, we had to beat Mexico 2-1 to qualify. And uh, we, we ended up going ahead and losing that game 2-1. But that was a, really the closest we came, that one game. And it's because most of them guys were playing in the Can Canadian Soccer League. So it was no coincidence. And then obviously as Canadian players are going out and playing and uh, not at the, the, the best clubs, uh, you had some better teams and some you know outside opportunities. But it's just been a big ass with no Canadian Soccer League, no structure around 
Um, it's just held us back. This Canadian team has players playing all over the world, winning titles all over the world, of course. Uh, no shortage of attacking talent, Carl. Who stands out to you? Who do you enjoy really watching on this Canadian team? Wow, what a, what a tough and what a great question. This team is so much fun to watch. Uh, you know, obviously you can look at the, the Alfonso Davis and the number of, of players you've got uh, playing. Um, but I think when you look at the collective, uh, how they press, how they work hard, power, pace, skill. Um, Herdman, you've got to give him a lot of credit. He's just done a tremendous job. And, um, you know, I think people have said, Dolan and Craig, uh, before, no one will want to meet him in the World Cup. And that's not being arrogant or getting carried away. This is a hard-working team that's got an abundance of talent and he's hungry. And what they've shown against Jamaica uh, in that game was uh, they're fearless. You know, they could have froze in the moment. OK, we've lost that game we shouldn't have lost now if we don't beat Jamaica we've got to go to Panama and get something but they just came out and uh, the game was never in doubt. Do you think that uh, you know when you look back on you know the Canadian team with the you guys in 1986 World Cup you know you're happy to be there you're you know not really believing you could probably get out of the group you're you're just trying to keep the score down and compete but you never know this team isn't just stumbled into the World Cup they've dominated CONCACAF. So what are the expectations for this team? Are they going to get out of the first group? I want to hear from you guys. I think there's a, a real possibility, and John Herdman has said that too, that he doesn't want to put a cap on just having qualified. And you're right, Craig, not only have they dominated, they're going to top the group. And, you know, you could say, well, they have three and a half spots and maybe it's a little easier to qualify with a bigger pool of teams and so on. But the fact that they've won the CONCACAF region They've gone to Azteca and drawn. They've gone to the U.S. and drawn. They've beaten teams at home, uh, including the big teams, all three of those, uh, Costa Rica, Mexico, and USA as well. Well, every team at home, essentially, except for Honduras in the first game. It's, it's been the way that they've played, I think, that have given people the, the belief that when they go there, like Carl said earlier, they won't just make up the numbers, but he's put uh, getting out of the group as a legitimate goal that I think can be achieved. Yeah, I think when you when you look at um, Mexico and US, when they've gone to the World Cups, top in CONCACAF, they've got out of their groups. So again, it, it it's a big ask, but it's not a big ask. It's I think they go in uh, believing that they're going to be in every game. So why shouldn't they be in every game? And uh, when you've got the 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 quality and um, just a collective belief that they have as a group. Um, there's, there's no reason not to think that way. Gentlemen, you are such a big part of a major chapter in Canadian soccer history. Thanks for joining us today to talk about writing a new one. Yeah. Happy to be with you. Doing this for years to come.